it's so funny to me um people ask me things like that as though it was a thing that I decided like a lawyer or a doctor or like I have an interest in cooking uh-huh. I'm gonna start no that's not, not, not what happened okay sorry to not go that way um at all I am a first generation Caribbean American okay my parents are British um and then my grandparents are from Jamaica and my dad is Indian and my mom is Jamaican. Mm-hmm. That being said, a woman's place is in the house, in the kitchen. Um, it was just my duty. I was just raised that this is going to be the thing that you're going to have to do. And so you should know how to do it well. And I was just like, all right. I mean, there's not really much of a choice there in learning to cook or to clean mm-hmm. or how to take care of kids or what to do with kids, like all of that. And when I was in high school, all throughout my high school career, um, inside of my house, there was, my grandfather was passing away from cancer Mm. and we did in-home hospice. So it was really rough for me during high school. It was not, (sighs) high school was rough, (laughs) let's put it like that. And, um, he passed away right after we got well not right after but a few months after we graduated i was not interested in college not interested in anything like it's very depressing being in a position like that where like every day you come home to like literally someone just that you love just wasting away in front of you and I did not really care or consider the future at all. I mean, I was grieving. I just didn't care about anything. And before he passed away, um, he sat me down. He just told me all of his regrets. So I wish I had sent you to private school. I wish I did this for you. I wish I did that for you. Uh I'm like, nah, you're good. The school was good. Everything was good. Like there's nothing more you could have done for me (laughs) to make my life better. Yeah, He yeah. was like, but you have to promise me that you will not just waste your life away. Like, I don't care what you do. I know everybody else has something to say about what you do. I don't care what you do. I love you. And you just got to do something with your life. Not make me proud. Not this. Just do something. Mm. Well, I don't sure. care what it is. Sure, sure. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something. Like, there's what am I good at? That's when... That's what proposed culinary arts into my life. What am I good at? Mm. What can I just make money from? Mm -hmm. And I was always good at cooking. I love to eat. My grandmother is really Jamaican. Um, So in my house, there was not like pizza and and, and tacos and stuff like that. We didn't eat that. Right, (laughs) right. As soon as I was allowed to cook my own food, I was learning how to make all that stuff. And um, I just, was like, you know, I'm going to go to culinary school. I'm, I'm good at it. I love food. I'm always going to have to eat. I'll always have a job forever. Mm-hmm. It looks fun. Mm-hmm. And I went, I applied to culinary school the very next day. Wow. I got in about two weeks later. And the day that I got in, my grandfather passed away that very wow. day. Wow. So I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> this is like a calling over my... He's at peace. <laughs> right. I, I need it's to go because I'm doing something. Clearly and something I, to this. Yeah. Right. So I cried my little eyes out. Went to culinary school. You know, I was 18 years old. I wasn't taking anything in life seriously. Yeah. So I dropped out of culinary school. I just couldn't afford the tuition. It was too much. And I started working and I living life, but I always came back to food somehow. I mm-hmm. um, had my own catering company at 19. So I was like working a receptionist job so that I can have like health insurance and pay my rent. But I was also hustling and taking gigs on the side and bartending and throwing events or whatever I could do to stay in the culinary scene at about mm-hmm. 25. That's when I'm like, you know what? I can't do cooking and do something else i either have to do cooking or i have to just do whatever else it is i'm gonna do Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to give it my all right now. And if by 30, I don't make it into something, then I'm going to just go be corporate. And like, that's just what life is going to be. Sure. Needless to say, by the time I was 30, I was Carmelo Anthony's private chef (laughs) under contract. What a powerful story. And like you said, the the timely aspect. There's a lot to to take in there. And for (laughs) for me to hear, yeah, it's like there you man you have like this thing that you that you know that you're interested in and passionate about and at that point of you sort of sort of saying to saying to yourself like all right i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna give this my all and i'm gonna you know try to do whatever it takes to put myself in a position to make this my you know main source of income at the time that you're starting and i guess everyone's story is different but at the time you're starting did you have expectations that you were going to be able to get yourself to this place? This place? Absolutely okay. no clue on how I was going to get it done. Okay. At all. Um, yeah. No clue on how. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. None. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Craigslist every day, looking for jobs. Um, yeah. Asking me, y'all, can you give me an opportunity, please? I just need to get my feet wet. Yo, I got fired from every job fired me like yeah i was devastated i'm like i must not be good at this but that's not what it is i was far too passionate for everything that everybody else had going on like i couldn't be the robot i couldn't just fall in line i'm always trying to make it better no we need to do it this way Mm -mm. okay no this doesn't taste good you need Uh to do something else not everybody appreciates that sort of feedback and you can be viewed as like micromanage try to be the boss of who she thinks she is all that that's when i realized you know what i'm a great hustler always been a hustler always did everything i could to make sure i had money really enjoy money (laughs) so Mm -hmm. Mm um i was like i think i need to just start hustling my services more Maybe I need to stop relying so much on getting that sous chef promotion, getting that lead line, getting that executive chef promotion, whatever it is I was going for at the time, and just make more money than these people that are trying that are like stopping me from right. elevating. Because that's the thing, right? Get in these positions and you show hunger. I want to be great. Yeah. And there's very few people that would be like, you know what? Let me groom you or let me show you what it takes to Mm -hmm. get here. Mm -hmm. People who want to stop you, step on you, shut you down. Like, nah, stay in your place. Know your Mm -hmm. place. I was Mm -hmm. never the one um, to follow that, like, stay in your place thing. I'm like, what is my place? Who are you telling me what my place is? My place is here. (laughs) I'm going to be here. Right, right. It never it's, stopped. It's while you say that. Last night I was I was um I got a YouTube recommendation for a video, a live conversation that happened on Instagram, but I guess someone uploaded recorded and uploaded to Instagram between two um two of like I would say my favorite people in music. So Pharrell was talking to Tyler the Creator. I have a Tyler the Creator big like a pretty big, you know, album picture of him right, right above my uh, keyboard over there. He's, his music, I'm like a huge fan of. And so they're talking to each other. And one of the things that really, really jumped out at me, I don't, I don't remember the exact quote or line that they said, but Tyler was talking to Pharrell. Uh, I guess they had a relationship, you know, for many years now where Pharrell's kind of like a mentor to him. And Tyler was just saying, you know, thank you so much, brother, for, for giving me the keys. And he said exactly, he was alluding to exactly what you just said, which is that, he said, you know, there's so many people that you come across that have information that they, you know, learn through hardships or whatever, but they have this information that they could easily tell, you know, share with you and it can just mm-hmm. like catapult you, right? It can, it can right. really help you, like, you know, for it can help you get from here to here in a much quicker and less stressful, I guess, time. Um, and he was just saying how like, that's like the most important thing to him now is like, is trying to provide that information or that advice or guidance even uh, for people that he knows have the potential or are going to do something, you know, something impactful with it. And man, right. that spoke to me yesterday so much. 
Right. How we have to be? uplift each other. We have to do what it takes to pass along the information, share the information, and not just share it and send people on their way. Like, no, like people need nurturing. Yeah. People need reassurances. They need you to edify them and, and help them to be more than what they are, but mm -hmm. only those that ask. Because I, I learned also the hard way to stop giving unsolicited advice. <laughs> Not ah, everybody. You that's interesting okay. yeah yeah so, you yeah. you're coming from a place of love and a place of helping wanting to uh, yeah. share feedback or share something and some people may not receive it the way that that you would expect or want them to well you know it's more about talking to someone and being aware of whether or not they're in a space to receive the information mm -hmm. um i read a book it changed my life change the way I look at people, things, maybe stop being spiteful, maybe stop being impatient. Um, the list goes on on things that it really curbed. It's called The Four Agreements. Okay. Very little book. Um, the Four Agreements is, it's like this guideline for life. Imagine like the Ten Commandments just boiled down into four things that could like just change everything. Wow. And wow. those are, oh my God, I hope I don't embarrass myself and forget them. Um, always do your best. Be impeccable with your word. Never assume. Oh my God, there's another one. Always do your best. Be impeccable. Don't, never make assumptions. There's another one. And I don't want to get to lion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it comes to me <laughs> if it comes yeah i'm I, it sounds like i need to read this book and maybe others do too it the sounds book like is amazing yeah it's and amazing. you said the key word in saying that it was small because i have a very difficult time um just doing what i know is important which is more reading and kind of getting that information from you know from reading um so the size of the book really jumped out at me it's okay maybe i can you know, yeah. I can actually commit to doing it, you know? It's a quick read. You can read it in a day. It's yeah. like not, you can read it in like an hour and a half probably if you start. Okay. Wow. Okay. It's a nice, right. easy read. And it's on Audible. Okay. That's another thing. See, I listen to a ton of podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts and specifically a, like a lot more ones where like, like people are being interviewed and people that either are in a space that maybe I want to get to or successful people and just kind of learning from them. There was one, mm -hmm. yeah, there was a guy from the CEO of Whole Foods was being interviewed. I forgot his name, but just hearing about any CEO of a, of a place, like in terms of like how they got there, how they got to where they're at or any entrepreneur like yourself, like right now, this mm -hmm. is kind of like something that's just it's very, very uh, just an awesome thing for me to be able to have someone like you, uh, on here to to now be fostering that same thing that I look to to kind of get advice and feedback and information from, you know, I hope and pray uh, that people will be able to like listen to this and really take some really, you know, important points so far that, that you covered just about, man, working hard. You you mentioned the word hustle, you know, earlier. Hustle is, a, is a state of mind. Um, yeah. This generation, sorry, y'all. And if you're listening to this and you're of this generation, you need to learn this. There is a certain grit that is necessary um, to actually hustle because you fall on your face more than you succeed. It's like you just keep falling, falling, falling until you get there. Mm -hmm. and you have to be able to dust that off and mm -hmm. get up and keep it going. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many job interviews that I went on that just tanked and bombed and it could have destroyed me. And I see it in others when they come to me or when I come across them, like just how defeated they are. And I'm like, yo, that's the name. If every opportunity was for you, you would have nothing to work for. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, don't, the journey is the success, not, not getting the job. Right. Getting the job is great. What do you do now? What is next? How do you how do you make the best of your moment, of your situation? What do you do when you get your dream job? 
What do you do when you get to that place that you've been working so hard? You say you get there. Now what? There is this like emptiness. The hustle, that grit gives you that what's next. It's like, oh, I could take this and I could do this and I could do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is so lacking. People are very, very complacent, yet complaining that they're not happy with where they are. Right, so, right. So you got to be willing to, I mean, sorry, to be cliche, like just dust yourself off and try again. That yeah. is, should be rule number one of hustling. God, that stuff off and try again. Because it's going to um, happen and you're going to need to. Yes. Multiple and it's times. those lessons that yeah. you learn along the way that when you do get the opportunity, you're looking at it like, like for, for example, I just did pop up in the NBA bubble, right? Mm-hmm. It was fantastic experience. Thank you. Shout out to the NBA. Nice. But it's one of the most difficult experiences of my life. And in that time, in that space, um, the reason why it was so difficult is because there was no structure. And we're mm-hmm. walking into a blind situation and having to figure it out. And it's not just one person coming in doing it how they want. There's 10 different people, nine different teams. I'm an independent everyone is top notch a game everyone's got all the answers how do you how do we all function in this space make it productive yeah. not overlap each other not get in each other's way all those things that on top of me i'm operating an entire restaurant everything from takeout through people calling in getting the online orders cooking the food, packaging the food, getting it to where it's supposed to go, like all of those things. If I did not go through every single bump, trial, and tribulation on the way, I would not have been prepared for that moment. Mm. Yeah. I must have said that 10 times while I was there. Like, I've everything I've ever learned, I've had to apply right now. Wow. Yeah. Full circle moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's critical. Yeah, having that that uh, those hardships, those hurdles that you have to kind of endure in the process, that that must be an amazing feeling, being able to apply that stuff and saying, wow, these things really are, weren't for nothing. Even though it sounds like you didn't think, or you didn't think that that was the case when you were experiencing them, you maybe just didn't know when they were gonna, you know, of course, come up to to Mm -hmm. be utilized like that. Man, that's so. How, how does how does an opportunity opportunity like that present itself? Is it because you you've worked with uh, you mentioned Carmelo Anthony, so you've um, been a private chef for him, someone in the NBA, and then it's kind of like a like a circle that people know about you through him, kind of thing. Or how, how does like an opportunity like that come? Um, not at all like that. <laughs> There's no that working mm-hmm. for him. Um, these past few years has put me more to the back burner. You don't, you're not on the scene, you're not on the spotlight. You, when you work for anybody of that caliber, whether they're athlete, entertainer, whatever, you have to take a back seat um, and just kind of focus on the job because there's already so much shine. You don't really want to bring a whole bunch of attention over to where you're at. You just want to do your job well. Yeah. Um, so no, the opportunity did not present itself from him as grateful as I am to be in his service and all of that I I would say being around him and being in the arenas and meeting people and meeting other teammates and servicing them um those things I had to do on my own like I had to be proactive about it myself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to be very structured because these are high net worth individuals that are used to a certain level of service. So I had to make sure that if I was going to be in their presence and servicing them, it had to like, I got to come correct in every way from contracts and how I, how I do business, how I move, how I handle things. They're watching it all. Mm. Um, So I said all that to say it is those relationships that I have built over years that has afforded me the opportunity to even be looked at by the nba i also did an insane proposal don't Mm. be scared to shoot your shot i spent like three g's on a proposal Mm -hmm. like (laughs) i was like 
everything, who I am, my plan, what I want to do, what my background, everything. And um, you got to invest in yourself. Like I did that and I made that with no guarantee that anybody was even going to look at it, let alone that I was going to get what I got. Cause that's not even the proposal I created wasn't even asking for what they gave me. What they gave me was like what they felt my proposal warranted, which is far more. Wow. Great. Yeah. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm, that is, that's, man, I'm, Great. I'm sitting here that, that I'm, I love hearing stories like that. Thank success, you. but success, you know, from hard work, and success that's related to something that you are passionate about that's that's what it's all about like you love cooking you love that that experience from from you know earlier what you mentioning mm -hmm. and you're good at it great at it and man that that's that's really really just an exciting thing for me to hear mm -hmm. and yeah i love it i'm so happy that that's, okay. that that's yeah going that that's going on absolutely <laughs> So let me, let me ask this, like, so mm -hmm. the title celebrity chef. <sighs> Hate that. Not a, okay. So not, so how, what do you, what do you, what do you consider yourself? Technically um, quote unquote, that is what the term is, mm. but I am a private chef entrepreneur. I'm, I want to be recognized by Forbes for being an amazing businesswoman and creating jobs and opportunities mm. for other chefs. Like my, work has led me to realize that okay circling back remember when i said um what do you do when you get your dream job mm -hmm. you create dream jobs for others that's right so i started a company mm -hmm. where i place chefs um assistants housekeepers with athletes entertainers high net worth individuals that need these types of services and can afford them and I meet people all along the way across my journeys. I'm always, I've always been very kind uh, in nature, just gentle and welcoming. Yeah. So I meet a lot of people, get their information. I keep in touch. If I have an event in their city, I holler at them. We work together. There's opportunities everywhere all the time. So when these athletes call me or anybody from anywhere calls me and they say, oh, I need a chef. I can in good faith refer them to people that I've worked with that yeah. can do the job as and this now creates an opportunity for my family that helps me to like run this company. So I get to be a chef, private chef, yeah. and then I get to run this company with my best friend and my mom. And wow. um it's amazing. Yeah. That is that's really that that's a powerful sentiment. I I've heard that before once or twice about once you know you make it to one of your goals and you have the ability to help put other people on and give them opportunities um mm -hmm. that's that is huge that you're that that's that's the direction things are going in what's what's Thanks. the name of your your business your company chef lex grant and co okay and that's all under the same umbrella of also kind of uh, helping bring other people on, like you mentioned, these other in other capacities. That's all under that. So same. my my primary company that I operate out of, like when you call to book me, um, is called Eat Me Up Cuisine. Okay. Eat Me Up Cuisine does like events. We do pop ups. We do private chef dinners. We do cannabis dinners, curated all wow. sort of stuff. Nice um, product placement, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And Chef Lex Grant & Co. is the placement company. Gotcha. So the in co is me and all the homies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, we do private chef placement. Um, we do, like, if you are on vacation and you need a chef, you can call us. If you are um, wanting a private dinner for two in your home, you can call us. If you're looking for a chef full-time, you can call us. If you are traveling you need a chef for a month you can call us if you have a sick relative and you need them to have a certain type of diet and you want mm -hmm. that food meal prepped or cooked at home you can call us that's the the type of services that we offer but 
it's really just about the fact that I have all these chefs who do all this awesome stuff, and I just want to give everybody a job. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we need money. Everybody needs money. Hey, so man. I'm not the only one that needs money. Other people need money too. So it's let's true. Yeah. Yeah. Try to create that. Yeah. And how good a feel? Uh, that has to be an awesome feeling helping facilitate that just based on relationships, like you said, maybe even more than amazing you. Amazing feeling. Right? Amazing helping others. Amazing feeling. Yeah, yeah. There is no greater joy because I love where I'm at. I highly doubt that for as long as my client wants me here, I'm going to be here. Um, I have a great life in the fact that I can work for him and still run this company that is very rare. That yeah. you can have both. So for me, I'm chilling. I, I know what I got to do every day. I can rest easy knowing that, you know, I just gave somebody else this exact same position with somebody else. Like I just yeah. made somebody else's life like this. Mm. And now I'm a vessel. Now I'm a source of knowledge. Um, now everyone is coming to me. I actually had to put a hard stop on it. The advice was getting out of control. Like, well, you have to pay. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to run me some coins. If you sure, sure. Um, of course. <laughs> yeah, but it got to the point where it was like all these people calling me for advice. So I don't know how to price. I don't know how to this. I don't know how to that. Wow. Then just let me manage you. It's not like when I do it, I don't want to put my my foot on your neck. I don't need to be over everything you got going on. Like. If mm-hmm. you don't know how to price yourself and you don't know how to structure your contract and you call me and I say, all right, I got you. I'm going to hook this up for you. I'll negotiate on your behalf. I'll do all those things. That, kinda, like, that's a service that people, yeah. when they do that for you, they want to keep you under working for them. That's not what my company does. Like, right. If the client wants, we manage the first 90 days. But after that, if you've been working one-on-one, you've got to hire that person. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't do, I don't like that for people. I mean, I'm getting kind of personal. I feel about it, but yeah, I just yeah. feel like that is, um, I don't know. It's like, it just stops people's growth. Like, I don't want to be in a position like where you're like on the tit, like just all the time. I'm just like, oh, help me out. No, I want to set people up to be independent. Let me put you in a position to be your own boss. Like, I don't want to rule over you. I just want to, like, give you the alley-oop so you can rule over yourself. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) That's it. Yes. Yeah. You have the information and experience that that is so valuable. Yeah. That's like giving, like, the keys, like we were mentioning earlier. That's kind of what that is. And I'm praying that over time and as it goes, that we create a network amongst each other. Mm. Like... That's how you weed out who's real and who's not real. Like the best of the best chefs should all link up. We should all be doing this together because yeah. there are a lot of chefs out here ruining our good name as well. Like that's, that's why up. my reputation is what it is because even if I'm in a position where one of my chefs messes up because I have such a large network, um, if someone's not happy, I, I will just get another chef. It's no problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody makes mistakes. Some mistakes more irreparable than irreparable than others. But like, can I fix the problem? Absolutely, hundred mm-hmm, mm-hmm. percent. Right. There's no doubt. No doubt that you'll yeah. be able to. Yeah. So your your day to day now. Are you you're residing in in Portland now? Yes, I live in Portland for live the Portland. basketball season. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you come back out here to to Jersey in August. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that that's I'm this is just this is really cool stuff. Like Thanks. I know I said it multiple times. It's hard. I I it's it, hard. it has to be like like there's so much there's so much to it. It's so uh it's so di- there's like in, in this field, there's different so many different, I would imagine, avenues that you can go in terms of being a chef, yes, right? There's so many sure. different types of things. And doing something like what you're doing now, and you, you kind of hinted on it earlier. You said like to, to be able to have this be your primary thing that you're doing, but also still be able to run your business, that's significant. Very, that very, significant. very, very, very significant. It is almost mm-hmm. impossible in my position, but I feel because my company developed so organically, mm-hmm. it wasn't anything that I was like trying to force to happen. It just 
fell into place um, mm-hmm. that, and it wasn't interfering with my duties at work. So yeah. it was like, all right, well, she's doing this. I didn't ask my boss for any help or referrals or anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I feel like that's wrong. Like yeah. when I come to work, I'm here to work, not yeah. to like get you to do stuff for me. And if people confuse that often in the fact that like when you work with celebrities, you're like, Oh, why they didn't this? Or why you didn't tell them to post it on their Instagram? Because I get a paycheck and all I am owed is service is f- fees for services rendered. That's right. <laughs> not give me, give me, give me, help me. No, like that's not, that's the fastest way to alienate yourself. So yeah. with that said, um, it's really important that on your way up, you're establishing who you are outside mm-hmm. of your client. I have an excellent reputation with my client, but I have a fantastic reputation outside of it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's important. And you my whole career that. isn't based on the fact that I work with him. I worked with him for years before anybody knew. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's, that's definitely key. I mean, that's like one of those things, kind of like you, you know, mentioned earlier too, like the importance of not like, I guess being yourself throughout the entire process, those relationships that you just mentioned that you kind of had to, again, hustle to kind of network with people and, and kind of put yourself out there organically, not like with the mindset of, oh, I'm doing this now so that I can get this, 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 and this. That, that sure, we all know that networking is, is going to help you be able to have those types of interactions, hopefully in the future. Uh, but going into it just in a, in a really um, genuine, genuine way, right? Just in a genuine way is, is very detectable, right? When you're talking to these other people and networking and stuff. And I, I'm, yeah, that's, that's really, really a good, good story. I'm glad we are, we're, we're connecting too, because as I'm realizing for this show that I have, you know, I started out the top of this year, actually in January. Uh, and I started with just me talking to the camera for like the first 10 episodes about things, experiences that I've had that I kind of felt might uplift and entertain and inspire others, that kind of thing. And then as I started thinking about it and kind of thinking of ways to grow and expand um, and, and for me to learn more um, and, and also to help other people, like you were just mentioning, I was thinking, okay, I have this platform. I was like, I would really, really love to have people on to be able to talk to them in all different walks of life. And that's becoming like one of, you know, my, I'll say many, but one of my few passions is being able to, to talk to people um, at all different levels in terms of their success. Some just starting out, some already established, but giving people a platform to be able to talk about their experiences and then have, you know, have like a nice professional package to say, hey, this is, you know, a conversation I had on YouTube. It was extremely enjoyable. And I, you know, I dropped some knowledge and this is like on record now. That's, mm-hmm. and, and you and I will be able to look back at this five years from now. You right. have your plans that you're moving When forward. I'm on the cover of Forbes. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, you know what's interesting? You mentioned Forbes a few times. I, I, I I'm going to be on Forbes. <laughs> Okay, anyway, says, that's I'm what I'm talking there. about. No one, no one has, no one should even to like have any inclination to say otherwise. You have yes. your, your ambitious. I was just talking yeah. to someone a few weeks ago. This episode didn't come out yet. But I gotta was, pause you really quick. Of course. Be right back. I got something on the stove. Be right back. Okay, no problem. Okay. Just in the nick of time, I almost burnt up my apples. I was gonna say, <laughs> what, what are you, what are you cooking now? What are you making? Um, there are these really beautiful apples in the uh, supermarket and I'm like, oh, these are pretty. Picked them up, didn't realize they're pink on the inside. So I'm like, wow, this is so what? dope. Go what? look at my Insta stories today. <laughs> See, it's like ch- a pink apple, naturally pink on the inside. So my boss loves muffins lately, <laughs> has been his thing. <laughs> so I have to make them healthy. So I make vegan muffins. Applesauce is my base. I ran out, so I'm gonna make some applesauce with these beautiful apples that I got. That's dope. Did you try any of the apples like to see what they taste like regular? I did. I, did. I did actually. I and cut what up are they like? Smith. Okay, so it's very sweet and tart, okay. but if we're comparing it to wine, it's like uh, it's like a Chardonnay. Like it's sweet, 
It has some sweetness, but it's dry at the end. Like ah, very dry at the end. Okay. Where like a Granny Smith apple is like semi Blanc. It has this dry, but it's crisp and sweet, and like full body in the mouth. So definitely. That's really cool. I have to look them up. I was going to ask you, do you know the name of the apples? Or I can just type in pink I and Google. don't. Not sure? Okay. And you didn't know, obviously, they were pink on the inside when you bought No, them. I was like, oh, is that cute? Yeah. <laughs> And that's the thing you you use the word cute to describe it. I'm I'm really curious about a, what a cute apple like look like. It looks different than a standard, I guess, on the outside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Different look toilet. Okay. It's a, right. it, it's like it's shaped different. It's oh. like usually when girls say something is cute, it's tiny. It's on more okay. on the small side. Okay. Okay. Um. That's. Funny. It was just like a perfectly shaped apple. It looked like. I don't know. The, the shape of the apple was awesome. And then on the outside, it was a little dusty looking. So okay. it was like, it looked like, I don't know, like it had some seasoning on it. I just like the way they right. looked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're like, I'm picking these up. Right. Yeah. That's so cool. Wow. Okay. I need to, I need to step up. So my wife and I, we're doing, um, we alternate who cooks uh, every week. And it's very much working out for us. Like we do a week by week thing. And the person who cooks that week, also does like the food shopping, whether it's like Whole Foods delivery or going to Costco or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so we alternate. And so Jess, she's, um, she's, you know, like experimenting and, you know, makes different things and like, and, and like it's diverse, I guess, with the things that she makes. And then she had to call me out the other day because I'm, I'm very, very, I've made the statement to her before that, that I enjoy cooking, which is true, but I, I'm not great at it. I'm okay, good enough at it. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm not very adventurous, right? So what I make is sweet potato and spinach and grilled chicken. And that's pretty much it. And I keep it very simple. And it's like, oh, okay. We're but you can keep it simple and classic. You can make like pot roast. I, oh, I think, okay, pot roast. Pot roast, I, don't, I, don't, I, would I wouldn't have the slightest. I barely even know what pot roast is. <laughs> okay. I don't even Do know what pot meat? No, we do eat meat, but what is, what is, I mean, that's a, maybe a dumb question, but what exactly is so pot roast? So pot roast is like stew meat, Okay. Right? So it's like the cubes, or if you ever see like a big hunk of meat like that, okay. it's not yep. a steak. Yep. So like you cut that up in cubes and you season it really good. Like you could over season it a little bit too. Okay. And um, you like brown it up in a pan, you add all these veggies, you add water, and then you let it sit like in a crock pot or something. Okay. All right. So I, I gotta I gotta be a little a little bit more adventurous. Clearly, you can be adventurous and and classic. Okay. You know, keep it something like, simple, but you, yeah, like it could be something that is basic or or homey or like that's traditional, and you just experiment with it, like pot yeah. pie. Yeah. Yeah. Pot pie is not that hard. Keep it. If simple. you just take your time. And, and cooking is all about following instructions. If you can read, you can cook. Right, right, right. So if I have an engineering degree, I should have no, no problem. Like, See, to... that may be what is hindering you. <laughs> as, I was say, as I was saying it, I was like, damn. I was like, you know what? Let me not the finish this The engineering degree is, it's too, is too like finicking too... with your creativity. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's true. That is true. I'm that is true. I'm such a creative. Like, such, mm -hmm. such. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Like mm -hmm. in my house, oh my god, I had to get a housekeeper. <laughs> wow, not bad. But I'm working so hard. If I wasn't doing anything in my life, sure, all the time and clean. But I'm working so crazy, and like post-it note, this, that, here, there, just little mm -hmm. things. I need them all. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I make enough money, and and we as women, especially Black women. Need to normalize luxury in our life. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay yeah. that don't, I got housekeeper. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. I needed it. Yeah. <laughs> don't downplay it, right? Right. I needed hang, the housekeeper. Hang on one second. Let me, let me send this text to my. I have a, my next interview in a few minutes. Let me let him know. We're going to start oh, yeah. at seven seven thirty with him. Seven thirty. My bad. So this is what I want to do. Cause this conversation. Yeah. I, first of all, I would love to. First of all, I would it's love just to. It's like running you. on, right? We don't have any structure. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't matter. Cause this is just. This is. It's one of those episodes that it's just. I, I love when it when that happens this way, where it's just organic okay. just conversation. So I, I love that. Um, and I mean, usually 
I asked two questions. I'm not going to ask one of these questions because we already covered a lot of very, very impactful stuff. I do want to know okay. a little bit about you on the personal side when it comes to music. Okay. Like, that's my passion, music. I want to know if you have a chance to go to a dream concert of yours with five artists that are going to perform living or dead. Think of five artists that you would like to go to your dream concert. And I definitely will be coming too because whoever you pick, I'm sure, are going to be like, no. I will definitely be there in I will be attendance. There. I, will, I have to be there. I mean, come on. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm deep. I am very, as the creative, I'm like all in my mind and my heart and my feelings and like such a girl about that stuff, right? So mm -hmm. I think I'm going to make these decisions emotionally okay. about who I want to see. Sure. I'm not sure if she is still alive or not, but there's one gospel singer that I would love for her to just perform for me because I just would bawl my eyes out. Mm -hmm. I remember my mom playing her for me growing up and just so much of my spirituality was like, even when I hear her now, I still got her on my Apple playlist. Like, I'm not oh, playing God. around. It's Tremaine, Hawk Tremaine Hawkins. Tremaine Hawkins. Okay, I have to look her up. Okay. She sings this song called What Shall I Do? And I cry every time. Wow. Okay. And she's just like my song. And I love to sing. I won't sing, though, no, now, because my voice is not there. But I love to sing. So when I sing to her, I don't care if I crack, I'll be belting it. Oh, yeah. My spirit. Um, so Tremaine Hawkins for Tremaine my spirit. Tremaine Hawkins. Okay. That decision. Um, for my heart, Tupac, because mm. him and I have the same birthday. And uh, uh, I uh. don't think people really understand how much Tupac resonates in my spirit. Mm. I don't think anybody really realizes how close they are to getting a Tupac reaction for me. Mm. Meaning <laughs> what? What's the Tupac reaction mean? Oh, the Tupac reaction? Um, gutterly explosive. Oh, like you you have a similar type of reaction that he is that what you mean? I have a have? very similar personality that I have had to like learn how to control. Oh, or oh wow. Got you. Okay. Interesting. Very explosive personality. Uh, now I ain't more that I'm calm, sweet, and nice. I learned how to work that through four agreements. Wow. Okay. In my life. I'm learning um, a lot. The, the book, I'm learning about yes, Hawkins. Life. Um, yeah. So we got Tremaine Hawkins, we got two parts. Uh -huh. I absolutely love um, Bob Marley. So if you come back and perform for me. Nice. I like that. That would be really nice. So far, so good. Eclectic yeah. group of people. I like it. Okay. Yes. Because it's like, we're going through it. Like Yes. Yes. Not all hip hop very, artists are all one type. We're kind of nice. Yeah. Diverse. No. Because uh -huh. I love music. So yeah. I want like a lot of different mm -hmm. um for singing pff, it's so hard whitney houston mm -hmm. yep yeah yep oh she could come back she could perform for me one time mm -hmm. and i love her Oh, but I already saw her in concert. So you? I okay. don't need to see her, see her again. again. Okay. I love Beyonce, but I see baby girl I'm at every show. I, uh -huh. I don't need this one to have you there. But right. I would love to have Rihanna there to close it out. Oh, yeah. I had a chance to see yeah. Rihanna in concert. You was, did? I did I too, did. but I was in the I was poor then. I was so far <laughs> I want her to perform with Bob. Ooh. Mm. I like where you're going with this. Okay. All right. A little. Yes. That, man, how dope would that be? So it would be, okay, it would be Tremaine Hawkins opens it up with praise and worship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, good. We are ready a little turn. Tupac going to come in. Shut it down. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be tired from dancing. So then Whitney's going to come in and do the Nice. Do where we could like sing, we could two step, we're gonna have a moment. Yeah. And then Bob and Riri gonna close out the show with the dance a thon. Man, can we make this the happen? Spirit. Or like, what do we have to can do we? to make this happen? That's oh, the question. God. Yeah, oh, exactly. God. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, that's dope. Okay. 
I was when you, I'm when different, you mentioned, right? <laughs> yeah, that's very different. When you mentioned I'm getting the name right, Tr- Tremaine Hawkins, right? Tremaine Hawkins, love, Tremaine love, Hawkins. love, love, love Tremaine. Tremaine Hawkins. When you mentioned her, I was I was wondering if you were going to go the opposite route and have her close out to be like peaceful. But I like the order that you just did. I, I love that. It's it's very. We gonna open with the word of the yes. Lord. Yes. Look, that's what we doing. That's yes. what's going on out here. Then we gonna let Tupac come through because he was also spitting that G. Don't yeah. get messed up. He was spitting real. Sh- I'm rocking with Definitely. Tupac all day. Definitely was. Yes. So. That's super exciting. Look, my concert couple, of my dreams. I'm, I'm, de- I'm definitely there. I love how diverse that, that group is. Thanks. I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots Man, of singing, I'm, lots of dancing. That's it. That's exactly right. I'm just like, uh, just really appreciative of you taking the time out. And okay. I would love to, I would I'm love to, to make keep, this happen forever. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why, you know, it, it, it doesn't hurt to reach back out as I've learned yeah. I, back in the day, maybe not so much, but nowadays it's like, you know, I, I get a vibe. I, I can tell, you know, when someone is interested, but just busy. And mm-hmm. usually it's not even people are people usually for this, they wouldn't say, yes, I'm down. And then if they're not like, what's, what's, that's that's not what that's how, pointless exactly it's not gonna happen that way so i'm i'm more than happy to to reach out i'm I'm just super glad that i did this was like you know you don't ever want to you know rank your rank your guests or anything you know that's not what we're gonna do but don't i will do that i will say that this part is gonna get cut out but no I, i'll just say like i i'm just yeah very appreciative and I, I would absolutely love to keep the conversation going and i'm proud of you for everything thank that you're you doing and thank how it's you. very how you're helping others is, is even more powerful. And I, I just, I'm excited to see what the, what the next months and years kind of happen. I'm, and I'm looking Forbes! forward to seeing you on that magazine. Yeah, on the Forbes Forbes, 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 Forbes. Forbes James Beard Award for Leadership and for Best Chef. Oh. You, you, <laughs> that's, you're that's not it. joking. You, this, is, this, is, this is what you're- Those this, are the goals. Yeah. That's what I'm looking towards. And when you, let, let, me, let, let's, let me close out with this. When you talk to people, who are not ambitious people because we know mm-hmm. some people like that do you have you had to learn did you have to learn how to manage those conversations to not let people's um lack of ambition kind of bring you down did you have to kind of learn how to manage that when you were first starting out yeah because everything is not for everybody like and i'm super chill and cool i'm like approachable so mm-hmm. okay we don't want to talk about hopes and dreams we can talk about boys we can talk mm-hmm. about shopping i like to shop we can, mm-hmm. Shop. Mm-hmm. We can talk about grocery store we can talk about your ratchet man and your terrible kids it's about whatever you want what we not gonna do uh-huh what we not gonna do is have you think that you have anything to say about my life and how i live it it's fine ah uh, gotcha Four agreements, yeah. I, you know what? Before I go, let me let me tell you what the fourth agreement is because yeah, okay. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. That was ah, one I was missing. That's powerful. Yes. Okay. Don't take anything personally. Never assume. Don't assume mm-hmm. nothing. Don't take nothing personally, and always do your best. It's like it's like this wave of I don't give. Just waves over you. <laughs> <laughs> what? I love that. So just to make sure, I, just, just to make sure I got it right, it was a, a wave of I don't give a. Just to make sure I got it right. Okay, because I wanted to make sure I Ooh, took a note of that. Okay, like that. <laughs> that is good. That's what I'm love talking that. about. But do you see how that is like so impactful to your life? It is, and it takes work. I'm sure. So much work. You have to remind yourself in every moment. Uh-huh. It's not a thing that's like, oh, this is where I feel now. It's like every time you have a disagreement, even family disagreement, so much stuff has happened where like I have been the one everyone has gone to for like reason. Mm. Because I'm the only one that's like, well, this is what you did to make her uncomfortable. Wow. <laughs> she didn't make you uncomfortable. Yeah. What is the objective here? What is it that y'all are both looking for? Is what you're looking for? Is what, can y'all meet in the middle? Yes. I will. Yeah. And everyone just wants to still be respectively mad because we are emotionally driven creatures. Yeah. But yeah. emotions I have learned are for joy. Even the pain, even the anger. Emotions are to remind us that we can feel. 
that we have the capacity to go through all these different things and not here to run our lives. Yeah. Because I tell you what, the bank don't accept my tears. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> <Start> these checks. <laughs> they don't. That's true. <laughs> That was intense, man. All right, that was intense. There. Done on that note. Done. I love done, it. Done. Done on that note. <laughs> let let my let my viewers know how to contact you, or we, I mean, not contact, but I thought we stopped recording you. a while ago. Say it again. Oh no, <laughs> we didn't. Stopped. Let me see. Just a second. Recording. Yep, still recording. Yep, still recording. Oh, Just check. we're good. Yeah, everything is. It's all. <laughs> everything is being recorded. Hey. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for listening. I am Alexia Grant, a.k.a. Chef Lex Grant, and you can find me at Chef Lex Grant on every social media platform. Awesome. Thank you so much again. You're welcome. You have a wonderful, wonderful evening. This was, it was such a, such a delight, and I'm super excited to get this out to, to share with the world. Yes, you're so welcome, boo. Anytime. All right. Take care of yourself, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Tell your wife right. I said what's up, too. I will. I will. Big hug. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.